maybe you could start off um, then introducing yourself and your work, maybe just a, a brief biography of your work and your life as an artist. And then we'd also love to hear um, your use of color, color theory, anything you have to say about color. And then we'll fire lots of questions at you. Okay, let's all give our attention and let's, say, let's everybody give a round of applause to the big room. Welcome to the Yeah. And, and you guys can come closer. Make sure you don't know. <laughs> uh, first of all, I have, I want to kind of introduce myself and uh, as an artist, I'm going to do a little bit about uh, the little history back to uh, after I graduated from college. Uh, so I, <coughs> I left Poland. I was born in Poland, uh, but I left Poland right after. Uh, I graduate uh, from Academy of Fine Art in Krakow. Uh, so I received a national grant from, from art and uh, in Poland for uh, study art abroad. So I left Poland. I traveled to France, through the France, Italy, Turkey, and back to Italy. So I I experienced a lot because uh, in Italy and France there were great museums and so I spent a lot of time uh, studying uh, great artists. So, and uh, I, along the way I was showing uh, my work in the galleries and other places. I did the murals in Ankara for public uh, display and so the I was in the gallery in Siena, Duccio Gallery, I remember, and the, uh, the owner of the gallery uh, said, we, when he heard I wanted, you know, travel to the United States, I want to go to the United States, he said, why are you going there? So, because I've been there, so if, if you're famous, it's okay, but if you're not famous, you're kind of nobody. <laughs> and it's it kind of, True or not, I don't know. But uh, I had one little show here in this country after 10 years. I arrived. So, uh, <coughs> so there wasn't, there wasn't easy. But I, I work all the time, uh, uh, no matter what situation was. I, I worked on the kitchen table, basement, and uh, then I graduated from to. Uh, you know, rent the studio, and, and now I, I have a huge studio <laughs> in the factory building in the rental. Usually I work in a series, because I, I think one painting is an uh, accident. You come up with a beautiful painting, it's an accident. Two paintings is a good idea to continue. Six painting is statement. So I, I like to make it statement instead just showing uh, beautiful work uh, but different, different from each other. So it's different focus when you're working on the on a group of painting because they have to communicate with each other. They have to relate. They have to be uh, kind of like consequent, and it's it's difficult to control that because. Usually, when you're painting, you always have a kind of inclination to to do something different. You know, to, it, it takes more discipline to do a series of paintings as a group, as a statement. So, uh, I usually work as a as a group, like three or four paintings at the same time. Uh, sometimes I, I go to like this. Uh, <coughs> when I completed, I, I went to all those paintings, the the, the, the <laughs> at once, and the boo, 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 you know, paint here, color here. So it kind of connected, and then I go back, I went back, uh, go back and, and do some uh, more final uh, kind of tuning. Uh, anyway, so why why this? Uh, I'm always interested in color. The color is, is just always uh, kind of fascinate me, and and I, I really uh, challenge myself 
to work with different color, with different family of color, with different palette. Uh, so uh, I'm a very spontaneous guy. So I, I never, never had a preconceived idea what to do. So like, for me, the painting is uh, is mystery. So I can start painting with a mishmash. I mean, kind of like working with the color, whatever it goes. And then I select, and then I just uh, working out, and it, it's very long process. This series, this this group of painting, was done. Actually, it took me t three years. Working, we're working, working, we're working. So it's a kind of constant going back to uh, to to those paintings. Uh, uh, they they were different color. There, there was white, there was black, there was uh, 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 different different color. So so if the family gets to this point, uh, they. The painting find themselves, kind of. You know, they want to be this way. So I, <laughs> I have very little control of it. Uh, so, according to choosing the color, but something strikes me when I start using this kind of palette. Uh, it's something in it, it's, it's something serious in, in this palette. Mm -hmm. So I, I just continue and. Uh, I tried to manipulate the surface and, uh, and overlapping colors because that's 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 me. I, I like I love to overlap uh, uh, colors. So if it's red, I go in with the blue over, or red again, or yellow, whatever. Uh, so it's it's a process in and out process. So it gives you painting more depth, uh, distance, kind of like a almost like a overlapping perspective when you see it's not just flat color uh, so it's uh, more more uh, uh, has the more movement and energy this way than just you know two two color together uh, something about color so uh, most people think you know like if they have a uh, uh, spectrum of colors and uh, they usually sell uh, 24, 45, or 100 different nuances of color is very not necessary because uh, all those colors are pigments, they're not colors. Colors is when you mix, then they become color. Uh, someone asked Tolstoy. You're familiar with Tolstoy, the Russian writer? <laughs> okay, so I ask, uh, what, what is your favorite color? He said, I don't have a favorite color. I like a harmony of colors. I think this is a very good description of what painting is about. It's about, about the relationship, dialogue, uh, balance uh, between colors. They have to be related. They have to uh, communicate with each other. It, it's like a, like a, almost like a living organism. See, you, you, you put the blue here, and a cry for blue then someplace else. If you put red here, and then cry for red someplace else. So, so you have to uh, uh, kind of uh, play with this because. That's the oldest, I mean, always been part of the quality in art. So it's nothing, it's nothing new. Nobody discovered anything new in art, uh, even if time is changes, but, uh, but the stable quality is the, the same since, uh, you know, cave paintings. And, uh, but it's a different way. That just manipulates, uh, uh, with the painting, with the surface, with, with the shape, just different way. Schnabel, a very famous artist, he said after the painting was in the 70s, late 70s painting was dead. I mean, the art almost was dead because it was conceptual art. There was a, a kind of 
so that it no, make no sense to, to, to paint anymore. Painting was uh, considered as an old-fashioned way to, uh, act, to art activity or whatever. So when, when this happened, Schnabel said, if painting is dead, it's a good time to start painting. I think he was right, because it it's, it's never ends. So I think people, people, several people, uh, they get to the limit, to the, to the you know, uh, big wall, and they don't know what to do, maybe because they're tired or something, but always a new generation who can pick up things here and there and start a little bit pushing that envelope further and further and further. So it, it's, it, it's like the art history is going in circle. It's uh, changes, obviously, but uh, but there's always is room for uh, new ideas, uh, new way of execution, new way of expression that comes out because uh, every one of us is different human being. You can't compare yourself with, uh, I mean, the, like you, you are the same as other person. No, you're a different person, different person and then whatever you use to express yourself, any medium will be different from other uh, people, obviously. So uh, the key is to, to find your own voice and, and, uh, and just, you know, you know, involve uh, yourself and uh, just get in and, and just create if you have uh, in you. So, uh, and art for me was always, uh, this is my life, like, like for water for fish or something, <laughs> so I can live without. So uh, it just energized me too, because it's not only painting, it's just painting, but also I get feedback from my, uh, from my painting. I learn a lot about universe, about a lot of other things. Uh, through the process of painting. Painting is, it teaches me uh, about a lot of things, other things. It's, it's not just painting, and it's, uh, it's connected to my subconscious, connected to my soul, connected to my sensitivity, connected to my everyday life. So, <coughs> anyway, so, and uh, if you, if you, Try to follow this this art artist steps and push the envelope further. This the, the world is open for you. <laughs> Thank you. So 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 much that Zbigniew said here today that I hope you know so at least something you caught and it resonated with you. I know you all have lots of questions. I made you come up with a couple questions, and I know you have probably a lot more. So let's um, take advantage of the artist being here and hear from him right here in front of these paintings. Let's, uh, let's hear some questions. I have a first question. I have come to see your work at least four times um, okay. since it's been up. I was very curious with your smaller paintings they all seem very, very similar, but I was wondering were you tri trying to, and you did say it, uh, create moods in terms of the coloring of the painting. Um, they look very, very similar, but with the color, it seemed to change the mood of the painting. Um, like the yellow one, and with the red lines in back of you, it, it, when I looked at it, I came back because I saw I, I saw the movement in the painting, but I start to see like a gate, you know, a window. So I'm asking you personally, were you trying to convey like objects in your paintings? What was the no no I'm okay. never, uh, no I I. I went to uh, St. Petersburg mm -hmm. once, 
and I was looking at the Rembrandt paintings, and I wasn't interested in what is that painting was about. It was particularly the protocol uh, son mm -hmm. uh, of his. And uh, I wasn't interested about story behind the painting. I was fascinated by the composition. I was fascinated by the color. It's always been my uh, uh, kind of challenge me that. Not the, not the story, mm -hmm. because I'm, I'm a painter. There's a lot of people who can write beautiful uh, essay about painting or other things, but I'm not a writer. So I express myself in painting. So this is pure abstract uh, composition, pure abstract. I have no uh, relation to any any uh, kind of nature or something. Maybe uh, it was, it was uh, kind of close to something reminds you because because I love nature. So so maybe something subconsciously come out. Like this this could be I don't know uh, log of of tree mm -hmm. or or uh, something. I mean if you're really looking to, to see something or this could be this is a circle, this is like I don't know the A uh, so but I play with this I didn't I just whatever comes in, the, in this moment I uh, I just just work uh, things out like like if I put this this strong color the 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 cry the spending cry to to have a you know contact with the with the top mm -hmm. so so it's pure uh, kind of speculation, pure speculation about the surface, the the the, the center I left, because in this particular case I was fascinated because most of the people, most of the artist works here. So I mean, this is the action uh, mm -hmm. uh, field. But I said to myself, like, how about you know, just leave the. Uh, center empty, just just one color, and play on the edges. Mm -hmm. Just play on the edges. So th this for, uh, kind of challenged me for for some times, and, and I just, uh, I love the size, with the 12 by 12, and then I start to continue working uh, from different color, different feeling, because I never uh, kind of uh, uh, Left or uh, <coughs> who I am, my, my, I love to feel something. I love uh, when painting speak to me emotionally, not only just painting. Mm -hmm. You know, I'd say I think because this is painting has uh, its own personality. It's uh, uh, I'm <coughs> gonna. See, I bent that part of me because it's, it's almost impossible. So I think every artist, every artist uh, has a very close emotional relationship with the work. If it's not, they, they, the, the painting is artificial, it's, it's, it's uh, meaningless, and uh, because it's, it's cold. Is impersonal and is just just the empty decorative. So I, I think it's it's two different things, uh, which is uh, you see a lot of, of of this kind of type of work. Uh, the people produce uh, sometimes. If this is this is different kind of perfection. It's two kind of perfection. So you, it's a perfection, it's an it's a idea, and execution, perfect execution. It's nothing else. <laughs> and is, this is different, different kind of perfection. The perfection is it, you can read in between the lines. That's, that's different, like a, like a poetry. 
you don't read the poetry uh, by the line. You, you, you read the poetry between the line. So what it means is important, not how, how it's written, it's also how it's written, but what it means, it has to uh, uh, express some feeling. Because the poetry without feeling, music without feeling, is just it's empty music. So the same thing goes to, to art. Uh, you can't abandon this emotional attachment to, to your own work. <coughs> mm -hmm. More questions? Well, you all have written down there. Someone from that side. What do you think? Let me try. Anything. Any, uh, any questions? I got a question. Um, no, some no. of their smaller paintings have this lovely texture on it. Like, it looks like, like the bottom of a sole of like a shoe or something. Uh -huh. Did you actually like step on the painting? Or how did you get that texture? Because that's pretty cool. Sometimes I'm, I'm using, I'm printing. I mean, it's kind of like with a uh, paper towel. If the it, color is too strong, they are uh, printed, and then I, I use that uh, kind of effect, which is kind of create the nuances. It's uh, more sensitive this way. So, uh, and also if, if, if I will not re remove, there will be different feelings. So it's a kind of, I like this flatness of this, very physical, and this is more transparent uh, color, color, the way of, Putting this, I don't mind to uh, printing or something once in a while. It's like here I, I did the same thing, but it, it gives you more, more interesting surface. So it's uh, it's more lively, more uh, kind of sensitive, and the, the contrast. I like this contrast between very solid, very, uh, uh, very flat color to uh, kind of transparent with the nuances, and different touch. So. I have a question. These are oil? Are no, the acrylic? Those are acrylic. I used to yeah. paint in oil, but I was sick and tired because drive. I'm not the kind of person who can, who can wait. I like to paint constantly. See, I like to change. I like, uh, I like to go from, from white to, to black and from black to white or to red or yellow, whatever. But uh, I like to challenge. I, I, I just always, always wonder what happened if if I put red color over. What happened if I put different color over something? I like the challenge. I like the surprises. I like I like go forward. I'm not afraid of destroy paintings. If, uh, for not for uh, this this destroying sake for this destruction of one of the painting, but just. When I destroy the painting, kind of, but never destroy experience. So I'm more care about experience than painting itself. So because experience is important, and then the experience uh, brings me an, uh, to another step forward. Another step forward. Painting is painting. You know, I can. Uh, I like to. Uh, reach the mystery. What is behind that? Everything, you know. When I'm painting, why I'm putting yellow? Why? Why? Why yellow? Sometimes you, you paint yellow, and then painting becomes red. So it looks like the painting trying to find itself. And then when 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 it's ready, I could, my job is to recognize when to stop. You know, which is uh, you know the whole secret. You know when to stop. Uh, but when everything clicks, everything is is working together as one organism, like 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 human beings. Like if you if you have a bad heart or something, uh, you see the dead body, and then you see what's the difference between living person and this. Visually, it's nothing different, but something is missing. I think it's the same thing with the painting. If uh, it has to. Uh, have its own life, kind of. Uh, then, then you have to recognize that when is the whole, all those colors, uh, it's harmonious. When they working together, when everything, the whole painting clicks as a, as a unified 
uh, painting. So it's, uh, it's this kind of things. Sometimes it's uh, little comparing to uh, different things, sometimes explain much better than, <laughs> uh, than just talking about painting. But mm -hmm. I like challenge, that's it. David has a question back here. Your um, small paintings and your large paintings, it's like two very different ways of working. Mm -hmm. Have you ever tried to take this approach onto a big scale like that? Well, something about the big scale, it's uh, when I work here on the big scale, uh, I just, I'm just work free. Mm -hmm. and, but I'm using the same, the same principle. Because I'm using, if you take, let's say, detail of my painting, it's like those small paintings. So you see this, there's a flat color next to uh, the kind of, and in the same play on, on the edges. Mm -hmm. See, the, the, the little uh, uh, rectangle, triangle, or something, something like loose, but it's still playing on the edges. Uh, but like I said, I, I feel more free. And uh, so, but if you if you if you look at you can recognize the same the same process the same uh, even palette and sometimes the same uh, person so and also this painting was was painted different times sure. so you you see two years different between those large small paintings and this one this mm -hmm. is very recent paintings mm -hmm. so it's uh, it's kind of uh, you experience, you grow, you, uh, and, and, and this, uh, this uh, size, if I was thinking, if you, if you try to put color here, it would be too much. I want to uh, create this kind of breathing space. Space I can, I can you can rest your eye. Mm -hmm. It's not so busy, so it's more, uh, I have a punch here, because the size, you you have uh, this is let's say red. You have this much red. I have twice bigger red and larger one. So you have this red. What uh, I want that red to be there, but the size is is much bigger. So because the size, I it allowed me to be more free or more playful. Mm -hmm. well, yeah, I think your larger paintings, many of them look like the kind of space you could almost step into. But your smaller paintings, to me, they look like they're going to jump off the canvas at us. <laughs> yeah, they're more decorative. They're more decorative. They have this this punchy yes, uh, exactly. yeah. look. Yeah. So there's no hesitation. Mm -hmm. No hesitation. Mm -hmm. So uh, this one I, uh, is more like in and out. I manipulate mm -hmm. the surface. I manipulate it with the space. Mm -hmm. uh, so. Uh, uh, it's it's uh, different, but uh, comes from the same source. Thank you. Yeah. Another question. Yes. Your bigger paintings, um, they seem to be a little darker than uh -huh. your smaller ones. But I'm just curious to know whether or not you did them like laying flat on the floor, or were you actually on a new I was working on, 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 a, on a wall, like this, like exactly like this. I have these hooks, and then I can work it on the wall because mm -hmm. uh, flat on the wall. Sometimes I work on the easel, with the big easel. That mm -hmm. depends, but uh, it's not on the floor. I used to on the floor, but it's uh, I, I, I don't know. It's different. Uh, was different feeling, and uh, uh, I like to have uh, kind of upright, so I'm more related to what's mm -hmm. going on. And the floor is like have to look, you know what I mean? So it's, it's, it's distracting, different, distracting, more to you. distracting, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. more distracting. And the color I choose, yes, uh, because. Uh, like I said, I, I want to uh, working with the more serious color, like a black, mm -hmm. black against against red, 
uh, red against blue. Uh, and I use the same palette, as you notice, is every painting has the same color, similar color. A little bit more, a little bit less, but basically it's the same color, the same combination of, of color, which are doing the same thing here. See, it is the, the same idea, but different. So I'm working with this, this exactly the same way. The same idea, the same palette, the same combination of colors, but different way. So I'm manipulating with this, which is uh, a kind of another challenge for me because it's, it's more difficult to use limited palette but create variety mm -hmm. of, of, of work. So it's not... Uh, and then that's what connects them too. Mm -hmm. That's what connects them as a, as a group. I felt the energy in, in, in the painting like you were... I can't tell you how you were feeling, but I got the feeling like you were just having a lot of fun with it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, love, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it because I just, uh, I don't know. It, it's the most often uh, I painting and I like it. And then next day, I don't like it. <laughs> so I paint over. <laughs> okay. So to the point that the painting convinced me. Mm -hmm. And and I don't want to uh, I don't want to go back. Okay. Like Pinty tells me, don't touch me. I don't want to be touched. I mean, this is this well, is spooky. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But you know, we we are relate very personally, very emotionally to anything we do in life. Mm -hmm. It's not just painting. It's that you work. You tell you sometimes. People like talking to to themselves about something or, or uh, cursing something or that. It's it's normal. I mean, uh, privately, right? Yeah. So <laughs> sometimes not. <laughs> sometimes not. <laughs> so that's, it's it's normal. I mean, like just uh, this takes a lot of energy from me. Okay. See. Yes. So 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 why I'm, uh, I I should have a rights to. Uh, aspect something too, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? <laughs> so, <laughs> so because it's, it's not just on the painting, but uh, I put my emotion and my work, my sometimes I'm more tired uh, mentally than physically after <laughs> after completed painting. I understand. So, so I have rights to to <laughs> whatever. <laughs> well, thank you for your insight. Thank you. Yeah. So. Let's take a couple more questions. Right. Alex, question. Um, when you start a painting, do you ever start out with an idea? Or do you just That's what I said. No, never, like ever. Uh, I don't like that because, uh, <coughs> see, idea is always, if you have idea, this always stays on the way. Always. Because if you have idea, and then the next thing is execution, right? You want to execute your idea. So when you execute an idea, you're blind to the process. Mm. You ignore the process. And then when, when the ex just idea execution lead to illustration. So you illustrate your idea. You totally cut out of the creation part. The process is important. Process of painting is important. Not, not, not the product. Uh, so you read the painting to the process. How this done? How this? How this work with this? How this? Work? So it's not. Uh, uh, idea is is uh, like I said. Always have because you have this picture in, in back of your head. This this perfect picture. Uh, and then you you working toward that to. Uh, make that uh, visual, visual kind of idea to see that visual idea executed. They're totally blind to to the process, which in the process sometimes beautiful things happen. Beautiful things happen, and you ignore because you you follow the idea. See, so I never never do that because you're not free anymore. You just become, uh, you know, carpenter. 
like you know how to make painting. So, so it's it's a big difference because, but then, then uh, is it is it just you start producing painting, not create painting. That's a big difference. Mm. Down there. More, more questions? I know you have. That's good mm -hmm. stuff. I have another question actually. Um, do you do your like color mixing on a palette, or do you just let it do it on the canvas, like as you're going? Uh, both. I, um, I have a cans. I don't have a palette. Okay. I have a cans like this. I mix it with the cans, and I, then I mix. Uh, sometimes I mix it on the palette on the canvas too. Because you have to touch, you have to push. Color sometimes is not because what you mix doesn't mean it's going to work. You put the color and then uh, you don't like it. So sometimes you have to uh, touch it and push it with the brush and then work it out. But uh, I always mix color, yes, always. Can I ask you? Tell me about your brushes that you're using on these. Ah, so <laughs> this I start, the, the whole thing start to when I use this this size brushes. Because I, I just I just wonder how long did I, did I do these big brushes? And then put me to the to totally different direction. Mm -hmm. To totally different freedom. You know, and uh, so uh, more bold, more, more, uh, Kind of, you know, you you see immediately what's going on. You know, you have to work it out, uh, and uh, so it's more kind of suitable for for stuff <laughs> like this. Because you know, I used to work, believe it or not, I, I I did paintings nine feet by nine feet. I used the brush number one. Believe it. Mm. So it's like. So little teeny tiny thing. It's like I was in the in the sound of Zen kind of <laughs> meditation, almost like a meditation. But when I I didn't think even, I just I just get uh, some kind of trend of uh, meditation when I execute this painting. It's like obsessive with this, and then and then I. I got tired of this. I just, you know, I want to be more, more free, more loose. More, it, it's it's kind of, see, it's like emotional feeling. Open the different doors for me. See, it's not like speculation about it. What what should I do? What the, no, it comes natural, natural. So naturally, so like I. So we step from one step to, to the next. And I, got, I just said the painting. What is, what is painting? It's like development of, from step one to step two, step two to step three. And so you, you travel <laughs> with, with, with the age, with, with everything. Uh, so it's a part of uh, the process of life, of your own life. How, how this happen? I don't know. Just how you inspire to to do something. Nobody knows. Inspiration comes from many sources, from nature, from accident, from uh, looking at the beautiful sky, looking at the you know. So it's not only one source of inspiration. So, but then, then you have to uh, give that inspiration certain direction, see? And then you are on the right path. But just inspiration, <laughs> for inspiration's sake, is not enough. You have to use that inspiration and then control and give you a certain direction, like, you know, more, and then you become more mature. Brittany, you have a piece of paper or anything you're wondering about? How did you find out about the Texas Gallery? Mm. Texas Gallery? 
Oh, uh, my friend, I have a, a friend who is also an artist. She mentioned to me, maybe we should show in the houses. So uh, then I call uh, Arthur and we set the time and it happened. So was that easy? That was, that, that was, that was it. That was, yeah. He recommended me and she said we should show. And uh, Arthur knew about me. He wanted to know about me. So, so it wasn't kind of like a uh, surprise. <laughs> so I had, uh, I'm in, in, New Bre uh, I'm in the museum collection, I have a, a private collection, I'm in a state collection. Uh, I show all the plays in Connecticut, New York. And uh, so it's not like it's a blank there. It's a, it's a history. Uh, so it's uh, people sometimes, I don't know people, people know me. Sometimes they say, I mention some name, and I go, you know, because I, I met a lot of people, but I had to associate it with the face. So I have some more version of that. I, I don't have a memory for names. I don't know. I don't know. So and that's why. And you know, all of you can be showing in this gallery starting the week after next, the student art show. All of you can submit four works. And it's going to be juried by an outside juror from New York that doesn't know anybody. Your names are not going to be on the work. The work's going to be picked purely on, on merit, and they're going to put together a beautiful show. So that's next week. And then one thing, well, I love this gallery. Somehow when I saw it, Many people have objections because they oh, this is never like a, a corridor or something. But f for my painting, it's beautiful because it's, they all have this this mm -hmm. continuing, you know. So it's two sizes and it's so different from each other. And uh, and this way you have more intimate contact with the painting too. Mm -hmm. So it's not like you see the painting in, in, in thousand miles mm -hmm. in the big gallery, you know. So here you, you you see you you are forced to to have the more intimate mm -hmm. relationship with the painting. But that's what I like about it. Mm -hmm. I have another question. Do you spend a lot of time figuring out how you're going to like hang what next to what, or do you just kind of let it happen? Or? Well, I uh, I put the painting on, on a, f a floor and then just decide no, this work with this, this work with this. You know, like the same thing with this, same thing. So if you take different arrangement, it would be different, different show. So, but in this particular, because the three, three, and three, so you have to choose which painting works together better than, you know what I mean, than the other. So it's choice. Anybody else? Some good questions here. Don't don't leave with something on your mind that you're <coughs> that you're wondering about. But yeah, this is right here. We just um, I spent a long time in here with a number of students yesterday for Slow Art Day, and mm -hmm. these were such rich paintings and rewarding paintings to spend a lot of time with. And I loved hearing all the conversations. They um, there's there's so much in them that we could spend a long time just looking. And the more we look, more is revealed. The colors at first you think. First, I thought, um, okay, there's some primaries here, but there's all these beautiful, mixed, muted, neutral colors. They all have their own little individuality. Each, uh, I'm, I've been focusing most of my time on the big ones. I love the little ones, but yesterday I, I looked at these, and I love that they each really do have their own personality and lovely balance. Um, that there wasn't, that there clearly wasn't a formula about them, but it was they they kind of. Um, really nicely ride the line between having a formula and doing their own thing. So they speak to each other, but they're very much their own paintings yeah. and I had the uh, classes, they're very rewarding. I had the classes yesterday, I ended class uh, with, in the Manchester Community College and uh, abstract paintings I like teaching. So, and I told students, so uh, you people, you go to the museum, people walking by the painting that they don't even uh, look for s one second or two seconds. 
They're just walk, walk, walking by the painting. I mean, it's so important to, to stop and look for the painting because it's impossible to see anything when you just look by or spend like five seconds. <laughs> you know? So that's a good, very good idea to, uh, to spend seconds. some time yeah. because you discover things. You really try to... And you know what, one thing that we were, there was a bunch of us in here, we were sitting here yesterday and looking at these, and as we've learned in color theory, color is the most relative medium in art. Color is always <laughs> changing. What you put down on your canvas changes depending on what's next to it, but also your yeah. eyes change at the more you look at a certain <laughs> color. And the more is revealed in these the longer you sit here, because your eyes are actually changing. Yeah, Those absolutely. cones and rods, what light and what color is coming in. The, you're looking at a blue painting, the blue, cones in your eyes, uh, your blue rods in your eyes get tired, so more hot colors come out. You know, it's uh, there's all kinds of physical things happening, actually, with your eyes, and they really happen on the big ones, because when you're looking at them, they take up your whole view, you know? So it was just so fun to to, to get that, take that precious time and sit down and, and really soak these up. All right, well. We're going to go back upstairs and paint now <laughs> with some of the energy from Excellent. this room, hopefully. Okay. Let's thank Zbigniew for his time.